Hi, my name is Joshua Watt, um, and I'm going to be talking to you today about uh, multi-config um, and the ways that you can use it uh, with uh, the Yocta project. Um, there's my email address and my IRC handle uh, if you'd like to contact me. Um, I probably don't have two hours of content here, so uh, go ahead and ask questions uh, as we go. Uh, and hopefully, maybe if we have some time at the end, I can just show you whatever you want to know about multi-config, hopefully. Um, so yeah, uh, so I titled this uh, multi-config inception. Um, I, I'm a really big fan of the 2010 uh, Christopher Nolan movie uh, where they enter people's dreams and uh, uh, try to, uh, you know, incept ideas into their dreams and make them think that they were their own. Um, but, uh, you know, inception is kind of the starting point of an institutional activity. And so hopefully uh, I can kind of uh, instill the idea that multi-config is really useful and you can start using it uh, in your and uh, whatever you're doing with the Octo project um, to solve certain problems or use cases that you have. Um, hopefully this presentation isn't so boring that that happens because you fell asleep and you know it happened in your dreams. So all right, so uh, so what is multi-config? Um, you know at a very basic level, uh, it's a tool or a, a feature built into Bitbake that allows uh, multiple different configurations to be built simultaneously. And like one of the easy ways to think about it, and it's, it's not 100% precise, but one of the easy ways to think about it is it kind of lets you have multiple local.com files um, active at once. Uh, so if you kind of trying to conceptualize what it lets you do, um, that that's a good way to think about it. Uh, this is the link to the documentation uh, that you can do um, or that you can look at, uh, which is really helpful for trying to figure out specific ways and examples of using multi-config. Uh, the documentation has got a lot of good things. All right, so uh, how do you define or create multi-configs? Um, so the way that you define multi-configs is by putting uh, these comp files in a uh, conf multi-config directory uh, that you can see kind of here. So in this example, this is in the build directory. You've got your conf and there's your normal local.conf that you would have, but then you have this multi-config directory and under there you have these two multi-configs defined. So in this case, there's an x86 multi-config uh, and an arm multi-config. And by putting these comp files in there, that makes those multi-configs um, available to be used, um, but not necessarily like active, activated when you use a build. So it, it defines them as being available, but not necessarily being used when you're building. Um, one of the nice things about multi-config is that it doesn't have to be in your build directory. This could also actually live inside of a layer. Um, so if this was your top level directory of your layer, um, you would have your conf directory and this, instead of local.com, this would be layer.conf. Uh, and then under there, you would have your multi-configs. So you can kind of package up multi-configs and ship them with a layer, uh, which is really convenient for a lot of use cases. Um, so multi-configs, uh, you enable or select multi-configs by uh, adding them to this BB multi-config variable and local.conf and I will Definitely have an example of that layer later, so hopefully that'll make a little more sense. Um, but when you enable a, a given set of multi-configs, um, Bitbake will actually go through and parse all of your recipes, you know, n plus one times. So if you have two multi-configs enabled, Bitbake's going to go parse all the recipes three times, once for each multi-config, um, and then one additional one for uh, the like. I call it the base configuration or the default configuration. It's the configuration where no multi-config is active. Um, so you just get local.conf with no multi-configs. Um, so that's kind of how you define uh, and enable multi-configs. Um, so you can kind of, so one of the things that makes multi-configs really powerful is that you can define dependencies between your different multi-configs. Um, and you can do that using the syntax here, and it kind of looks big and scary. So we're going to walk through this a little bit. Um, so what you do to define a multi-config dependency uh, is you, you define which task 
you want the dependency to apply to, and then you use this MC depends variable flag. Uh, and then you set that to the dependencies that you want. Um, and that's just the standard space separated list of dependencies that you would see anywhere else. Uh, so you can have multiple dependencies just by putting multiple of these types of things in there um, separated by spaces. Uh, and the way these dependencies are defined uh, is the first thing that has to be there is this MC colon uh, prefix, and that's just static. That has to be there for every multi-config dependency. That tells BitBake this is a multi-config dependency. And then the next field uh, that's in here, uh, this is the what's called the from multi-config. Uh, and that's the multi-config that must be active for this dependency to apply. Uh, and so what happens is when BitBake is going through and parsing and trying to figure out all the dependencies, if the current multi-config it's parsing isn't the screen one cob in this example, uh, then it just outright skips this dependency and doesn't add it to the, the dependencies of the task. Um, the next field here, this is the dependency, the multi-config upon which you are depending. So it's the from or the to multi-config is what it's called in the documentation. Um, so that's the multi-config that you want to depend on from whatever the current one in green is, is gonna be this blue one. And then inside of that multi-config, you select which recipe you want to depend on uh, and which task inside of that recipe uh, you want to depend on. Uh, and so if you kind of, you can kind of uh, read this out in sentence form if that helps you understand it a little better. So you can kind of say something like, when the current multi-config is Cobb, the do install task depends on the task do image complete from the Arthur image recipe in the Arthur multi-config. <laughs> uh, well, it's kind of a handful, but that's, that's kind of how you express these multi-config dependencies. Uh, um, yeah. Um, so uh, there's a couple of caveats when you're dealing with multi-config dependencies. Um, the first one is that if you want to have a multi-config de fig dependency from the base or the default uh, multi-config, which is when no multi-config is active, uh, you know that 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 plus one in your n plus one uh, parsings, um, you do that with the empty string. So the omission of a multi-config here means it applies to that default configuration, um, but otherwise this is the same dependency. It just only applies to the default. Uh, if, if you want a, yeah, you can also use this BB current uh, MC variable, and that always refers to the name of the current multi-config, except the base multi-config, um, because it actually gets set to the string default for the base multi-config, um, which is not how you specify a dependency. I'm not quite sure where there's an incongruency there, but uh, uh, that's just how it works. So uh, in this case, whatever the current multi-config is going to depend on this uh, multi-config uh, uh, recipe and task. So that's really convenient if you just want whatever the current one happens to be to depend on that thing. Um, that way you don't have to list out a whole slew of uh, multi-config dependencies for every possible multi-config that could depend on it. All right, so I got a little demo uh, that we're gonna uh, do together here and hopefully this will all work. Um, so what we're gonna do is we are going to run uh, QEMU uh, within QEMU, uh, which if you've seen the movie Inception, this will kind of explain where I got the idea for uh, this. So uh, what's gonna happen here is we're going to build your, uh, BitBake is gonna build your uh, host QEMU, so that's like QEMU native. And then that is going to be used to run this uh, green uh, green uh, Linux kernel and uh, uh, Cobb image. And these are in the, these are built out of the Cobb uh, multi-config. Um, and what's uh, gonna be, one of the things that's gonna be included in that image is a, its own build of QEMU. Uh, and then also, 
in that image is going to be included this Arthur image root file system uh, and Linux kernel. And so what we're going to end up doing is we're going to use your native QEMU to boot this Cobb image and Linux kernel, which is then going to run QEMU inside of it and boot this Arthur image um, and Linux kernel. Um, and uh, if you go look at the layers that I have you pull down, you'll you'll see the MC depends between uh, the Arthur image and the Linux kernel. It's not actually on the Cobb image; it's on a different recipe, but uh, it's in there if you do a little poking around. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and walk through this. Um, as always, uh, you should start with a new shell. Uh, and hopefully the first couple steps are all pretty familiar to you uh, from doing the, the previous classes. I've kind of tried to highlight in yellow the new interesting things that we're doing. Um, so uh, yeah, um, let's go ahead and get started on this. Um, let me know if you're having trouble or something, because um, I kind of want to make sure we're all in the same place here. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started here. I'm going to go ahead and do this with you. See how good my instructions are, I suppose. Um, yeah, if you're having trouble with anything or um, uh, whatever, I have the Slack chat up on a second screen. I can kind of see that a little bit. Um, so you can put your messages there. I can't see the Zoom chat. So if, if anyone's talking on the Zoom chat, someone will have to um, let me know. Oh, slide nine has a typo. Should be. Oh, ah, yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, when you're doing the clone, add add the S to the Git multi-config demos. I must have uh huh, I'm not yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, okay, so we clone down that. We have this to our BB layers. Oops. Okay. Okay, so here's here's that line um, that I was talking about with the uh, the multi config. Um, the the BB multi config. So this is actually going to enable uh, the Cobb and Arthur multi-configs that are present uh, in the meta multi-configs demo layer. Um, I'm going to run this command, and then I'm actually going to um, go in and look at it in the local comp so you can kind of see what it looks like without all the escaping and stuff. Right, so yeah, so this line right here, this is the one that actually enables those multi-configs to be parsed by BitBake uh, when it goes to do, to do the builds. Um, so yeah, then you can add as many there as you want. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna wait just a second here. And I just realized that by doing all that, it may have been really hard for you guys to see the slides. So uh Um, yeah, is anyone having trouble with this? Has anyone started building, finished building? It should build very quickly. Um, it should all go from S state. I'm gonna go ahead and start my build here. Um, so one of the things you'll notice here, um, let's go and go parse all the recipes. And uh, your, your parsing time will take longer with multi-config, um, just by virtue of it having to parse everything multiple times.
yeah, it'll it'll take a few minutes to update the estate cache or even though those pulling from estate. So I'm going to start my build here. Uh, I'm going to start my build here and uh, okay so uh, one of the interesting things that you'll notice, uh, first of all, is you'll notice you get three of these build configuration blocks showing up by Bitbank. you get one for every multi config so this MC default that's that base default configuration that I was telling you about. Um, and then you've got the. Uh, the Cobb multi config and the Arthur multi config that we activated so for every, for every multi config you activate you're going to see one of these. Um, the reason for that being some of these things may be different for each of them, right? Like the machine and the distro and whatever might be different for every multi-config. So printing that out is really helpful. Uh, yeah, the progress reporting on um, multi-config, or I, th I think that's just actually a state in general, not necessarily multi-config related. Uh, it needs a little bit of work. Um, <laughs> Yes, that is a lot of tasks. Uh, so what what's happening? Um, is it wait? Is it building that many tasks, or is it, or is it doing estate for that many tasks? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yes, it will. That is. It's going to be three times. Uh, well, not three times. It's going to be twice as many tasks as you normally have, um, and that's because we're building two multi-configs. Um, and so, yeah, great. Uh, yeah, so we're doing two multi-configs, so it's gotta run all the tasks. So what you'll notice here while this is building is all of these tasks have this MC Cobb prefix. And if you watch, you'll start to see some of the MC Arthur prefixes show, show up in there also. Oh, errors in the Zoom chat, um, okay. This is going to block out my screen because I can't. Yeah, so there you'll see it's generating that Arthur image root FS. Okay, yeah, that looks like that's just about the S on the end. I'm sorry, I my slides have a typo. You need to add um, an S at the end of the path on the clone step. Um, I'm really sorry about that. I'll, I, I, I made a few changes to my slides since I uploaded them. I will upload them again um, and fix that um, so that you guys have that for a reference. Self a note to do that. Oh, yeah. So I will cover the use cases for multi-config. Um, after the demo, I've got several of them. Has anyone not gotten to the point of running BitBake yet? If you haven't, Yes, in this particular use case, the multi configs are all almost identical. Um, that's just for uh, training purposes. Um, it's just, it, it allows us to share S state between all the multi configs because they're all identical. Um, so that just makes it a lot easier. Otherwise, we potentially would have to have huge S state caches on the VMs, and that gets pretty complicated. Um, Okay, yeah. So you can see here it's building this Arthur image. Oh my, that's quite an error. Uh, ooh. Are you in? Oh, you are in the build config.
Real task will be run instead. Huh, that is very interesting. Um, oh, is that in the Slack chat? Is that why I missed it? Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. There's lots of errors in here. Okay, I'm seeing. You should not get any errors or warnings when you're building. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, Thomas, I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, but I would probably... Um, I would probably go ahead and um, do, um, is Thomas in Slack or is he, yeah, uh, can, can you see Slack, Thomas? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, good case to demonstrate debugging approaches. Um, <sighs> Deadlocked on deferred tasks. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm not exactly sure what's going on there, Thomas. Probably what I would recommend doing is uh, doing, Thomas cannot see Slack. Okay. Um, I'm gonna, okay, I'll, I'll do it in the, the Zoom chat. Yeah, delete the build folder and start over. So uh, yeah, yeah, that's okay. He's got it. Sorry about that. It's really hard for me. I can see the, the Slack chat at the same time. I can't see the Zoom chat as easily. Um, okay, yeah, so if you'll notice here on mine, it's it's building, I have this recipe called Arthur Embed, um, and that's the one that actually MC depends on the Arthur root file system uh, and kernel. It, it pulls the Arthur root file system and kernel into uh, uh, the um, the Cobb root file system and kernel, or the Cobb root file system. It's the recipe that pulls that in. Oh, uh, let's see. Multi-config dependency MC Cobb image depends on non-existent multi-config configuration in Cobb. Um, that's an interesting one. I want to say maybe you don't have the BB multi-config uh, set up correctly in your local.conf, make sure that that's, that looks like, um, um, like I showed in my slides, maybe just delete the BB multi-config line you had in your local.conf um, and try that again and see if that fixes it. It makes server run to times out. Yeah, sometimes that can happen if you get a parsing error. If you delete the bitbake.lock file, you need to kill bitbake first. Otherwise, you'll get into trouble. Uh, right. Okay. So if you ran that if you ran that BB layers command twice, each time you run it, it's going to add it. And BB layers doesn't like it if you get multiple. It doesn't like it if you get multiple um, layers. Yeah, I'm going to cover some of the, the use cases. I got a bunch of slides on use cases for multi-config. I will cover that when the demo is done here. Um, yeah, Pokey's already done in here. You've already got Pokey. You just, the only thing you need to clone down is the, um, the GitHub 
slide. Sorry, I didn't get that pre-included. I was, I was still working on them. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, ben, can you post the error you're getting with the clone? I can't, yeah, that, that clone should work. Um, Authentication failed there. It's HTTP, I think. There shouldn't be any authentication. Um, hmm. Can you post the command you're running to clone it, Tom? I didn't accidentally post a SSH in there or something, did I? Oh, it's HTTPS on the slides. Yes, it is HTTPS in the slides. Yeah, you can try it without the HTTPS, I guess. I, I didn't think that would be a problem. On the VM. Oh my, that's a fun one. Uh, ben, are you using the class VM or are you doing this on your on a, I know some people try to do these on their own machine, which is. Okay, yeah, so I'm guessing something's, maybe you've got some corporate network or something blocking HTTPS. You could try the HTTP, oh, class VM from email. Oh, that, yeah, that's weird. Huh, it shouldn't be asking you for a password. I mean, it's just the normal get clone um, GitHub. Um, did, you, did you try it without the HTTPS or is it still asking for a username and password? Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, I can show. Okay, yeah, real quick. So you can see it's building the cob image or DFS here. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, if you're getting that populate LIC warnings and errors, I think you're probably going to need to. Uh, oh, this is really hard to show. Uh, I can't get it without blocking it. Okay, and just remember when you clone this down, there needs to be an S on the end of this. Uh, sorry, there's a. I can't position it so that you can see the clone <laughs> and I can see the Zoom chat. So, but yeah, if you get the LIC warnings, you'll need to do like a. Um, Do that and then try again. Man, okay. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's that is weird. Um, I'm not sure what's causing that. Uh, hmm. Sorry. Can you still see that get clone? I'm sorry. I. If if you're getting that, try that. Okay. 
sorry, sorry about that. Um, I'm not sure what's going on there. Huh, still getting the license errors. That's weird. I do not, I'm sorry, I don't know what's going on there. Um, let's see. Yeah, no suitable package found. Uh, yeah, it's gonna take forever if, to build all of that. It's not a fatal error, it, it, it'll, it'll still, struggle on but it'll just it, it, I mean it'll take hours to build <laughs> probably <laughs> yeah oh sorry I'm covering up that URL again uh, maybe you can squeeze it in right here there we go build works for me okay Yeah, that's interesting. Um, I really. Oh, the slides are on the talks thing. Um, I can send you, I think I can send you a link here. Yep. Right here, I think. I think I think you can get the slide. I posted the link to the slides in Slack. Um, I think you can get them from there. Let's see, okay, who's... Yep, that's the link I posted is just the link to the slides from the schedule page, so yeah. Yeah, Thomas, I would I would expect that to work. I'm I'm sorry, I'm not sure what's going on there. That should do it. Okay. Um let's see. I'm sorry if I pronounce your name poorly. Chris Christoph. Did you did try did deleting that? build directory work for you? Or did you want to keep trying? Is it slow because of lots of people or something else? Uh, it's it's probably just, uh, yeah, probably. Uh, it's it's going to be IO bound generating those root file systems. Um, I mean, everything else comes from S state, so it should go pretty quick. Uh, but the actual generating of the root file systems does a lot of writing to disk. Um, so. Yeah, that's probably going to be somewhat IO bound from the, you know, the images. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Timeout waiting for a reply from the BitBake server. Yeah, I don't know why it's doing that. Sometimes that can happen if there's some sort of weird parsing error, but it shouldn't be since it's all clean. Um, you can try killing BitBake 
and then trying again. Yeah, yeah, they kill dash nine to big server. There's some sort of latent bug there, I think, that needs to be figured out. I promise I do I do hundreds and hundreds of multi-config builds every day. <laughs> yeah, you could also remove the S from the Yeah, I guess it does depend on how the VMs are set up. If they're, they might be getting starved out. I'm not sure how they're set up. So, hopefully they don't all. Uh, hopefully they all run QMU. Okay, we're gonna find out. You know, no no demo survives contact with the enemy, right? <laughs> oh, good. Okay, you got the build. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I really wanted to include more um, uh, Inception references, but I, I didn't really have any good way of sneaking them in. Yeah, I mean, the, the that, that error with the, um, the licensing things. I mean, it's it's not a fatal error. Um, it's still gonna build. Basically, it's just saying it can't restore that thing from S state for some reason. That is uh, probably needs a higher debugging level to actually tell you. Um, so it's gonna skip the S state portion and go ahead and build all of those from source. So it'll work. It's just gonna take a really long time. Yeah. Uh, right. Okay. So multi-config has been around for a while. Um, I don't remember what release it was added in, but for a while, the prefix was actually the word multi-config instead of MC. Um, and, uh, and then they shortened it to MC. And I, I'm sorry, I don't remember what release multi-config was added in, and I don't re remember what release they changed it to be the MC prefix instead of the multi-config prefix. I'm pretty sure multi-config was in Rocco, but it probably used the entire multi-config word as the prefix instead of just MC. So if you want to go back and try it on those older ones, you can try that with basically just replace everywhere you've seen MC in here with the word multi-config. Um, but there's been a lot of work done on multi-config since Rocco. So some of the stuff that you're going to see here probably won't work. I think multi-config in general has gotten a little more popular lately, so there's been a lot more bug fixes and stuff done for it. Okay, D does anyone really want me to wait? Can I move on? Okay, yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and run. Okay, so let's go on ahead and go on. I'm gonna close the Zoom chat here, sorry, just so that it's not covering up my slides. So if someone starts talking a bunch on the Zoom chat, someone in Slack, let me know. 
Okay. Uh, okay, so now we're going to actually run QEMU um, and try this all out. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use the run QEMU command, which I think you've probably used in previous uh, demonstrations. Um, but we're going to do the no graphics because we don't have a screen uh, in serial standard IO. So you can see all of the root console output on your standard IO, slurp for the user networking, and then this uh, KVM flag, which will make QEMU run uh, hardware accelerated, which we can do because it's QEMU x86 running on an x86 host. So it'll run all of the user mode um, code natively on your CPU, which makes it execute a lot faster. The new part here um, is this multi-config equals cob environment variable. Um, and that's basically how you tell run QEMU which multi-config you want to run. Um, so we can go ahead and boot this up here. And hopefully this will go for everyone. There is no limit on the number of multi-configs that I am aware of. Um, like I said, the, the parsing time slows down with every one you add. So if you add a bunch of them, it's, it might go pretty slow. So th this, hopefully you've run this QEMU and you've seen that it boots up uh, fairly quickly, um, which is good. Um, so if you go ahead and log in and then you can run this uh, etsydreamer.comp file, you know what I can do. I think I can go, let's see, sorry. I'll just, there we go. Uh, you can run this. There we go. Uh, you can run this uh, etsydreamer.comp file, uh, which will tell you which uh, multi-config this was built out of. Uh, so it tells you this is the Cobb multi-config and, uh, you know, sweet dreams. Um, and then uh, we can, you know, recurse uh, down one more level um, and uh, run the Arthur QMU image. Uh, I, I just wrote a little script um, to do this for you. Uh, it's, it's just a really simple shell script that invokes, invokes QEMU um, with all the proper arguments to run, uh, to run uh, the Arthur root file system and kernel that are embedded in the Cobb root file system and kernel script. You can go take a peek at it if you're curious. Um, so when you run that, you'll see that it boots up here. Um, it actually goes quite a bit slower um, because it is not hardware accelerated. <laughs> um, yes, that has, uh, yeah, BitBake did used to have problems with exhausting the memory um, when you had a lot of multi-configs um, and it was really slow. I think it ended up, I think I was looking at it and it was like some sort of N squared growth. Um, that was a bug that I fixed. Oh gosh, I don't remember. A couple of releases ago. It's not as bad as it used to be. I think it scales linearly now. Um, anyway, uh, so what you can see here um, is now if you log into this one uh, and you do cat dreamer, um, and you'll see now we're in the, the Arthur uh, 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 image, uh, Arthur multi-config image. And of course we still have our sweet dreams. Um, you'll notice this one booted a lot slower. Um, and the reason for that it is, is that it is doing 100% software emulation. Um, and it has to do that because it doesn't have access to the dev KVM device inside of another QEMU. Um, so, if you want to get out of here, you can halt. And that will get you back to uh, you know, this is back to your cob image here. And you can halt out of there and get back to your thing. Um, hopefully, if you got it to build, that just all ran for you. Um, and that just worked the way that. It was supposed to. Um, but yeah. Okay. So obviously that's a, that's a very contrived example. Why would I ever need to run QEMU inside of QEMU? Well, you, you probably don't. Um, so what what would you use um, multi-config for? And uh, 
I've kind of come up with about three major use cases that you might want to use multi-config for. Um, so the first major one is, uh, is build optimization. So the estate and download cache um, are actually shared between all of your uh, multi-configs. Um, or can be shared between all of your multi-configs. So in a single invocation of BitBake, you can build a whole bunch of multi-configs at once. And de depending on your build configuration setup, that might be more efficient than either building them serially back to back or, um, you know, if you have a limited number of builders or something like that, right? Um, because what can happen is if you have long running tasks like do root FS uh, running for one multi config, it can kind of fill in with compile tasks or something from other multi other multi configs and keep the whole, um, uh, you know, keep the build machine uh, at higher utilization uh, because it can schedule in these other tasks while the you know, IO intensive tasks are running um, or whatever. So that's one reason you might want to do build optimization um, uh, for, for build optimization. Uh, so complex dependencies. Um, so this is kind of, I would say like the main use case for multi-config uh, because it really allows you to construct these complex systems um, with a single invocation of BitBake. So you can throw a whole bunch of stuff together from all sorts of different uh, ways of being built uh, in a single invocation of Burt Bake, uh, which is really awesome. Let's do some complex things. I'm going to cover some more specific use cases in just a minute for that. Um, and then the last reason uh, is you might want to use it for uh, what I like to call configuration or product management. Um, so the multi config files are actually parsed um, after your local.conf. Um, and because you can ship them with a layer, you can kind of use them as like pre-canned configurations for how to build a specific thing. Um, so, you know, if you have a, a product or a build of some kind and you want to make sure that everyone is building it the same way, you can ship that as a multi-config in your layer. And then by building that multi-config, you can ensure that everyone's building it consistently. Um, the nice thing about this, as opposed to having users go in and edit the layer local.conf to uh, um, do whatever the build is that they need to do, um, is that A, they can keep their local.conf because it can just coexist with multi-config. So they can still, um, uh, they can still make uh, changes to what they're building um, in their local.conf if they want to make customizations. Um, Oh, uh, how to have multi-config in the layer. Yeah, it, the multi-configs in the layer um, are just like, I can go back to it at the end. Remember to ask me again at the end and I'll go back to the slide that had that. Um, yes, yeah, so they can kind of be these pre-canned configurations that you can make sure that everyone's getting a consistent thing. Um, that's, uh, that's actually a lot how I use it at, uh, at work. Um, okay. Okay, so here's, you know, we. We do embedded systems here, most of us do. Um, so here's a typical embedded system, or what a typical embedded system might look like uh, that, that we would work on. So we've got our, our main CPU here, and that might be ARM or x86 or something like that. And then there's, there's a bus here, and there's a DSP that's connected to it, and maybe an FPGA, and maybe a coprocessor. And your coprocessor might be, you know, like a little, M not ARM processor, or maybe even some Risk Five thing, or you know something like that um, that uh, maybe you need. And so you need to build images for all of these things in order for this device to function as it's intended, um, right? And so that that can get really complicated. Um, but multi-config can make that a lot easier because you can set up multi-configs for all of these different components that you need to build and then bring them all together into a single image with one build command, right? So you might have your, your main root file system and kernel and stuff for your main CPU that you need to run. Um, and then, you know, that's might be Linux or whatever you have. 
Uh, and then you might have a different multi-config for your coprocessor here, which you know doesn't have to be Linux or even the same architecture. You know, like, like I said, it could be Risk Five or M Not, or you know maybe it runs Zephyr or you know whatever you want to run on there. And you can have multi-config generate an in uh, an image that you can then embed uh, into your main root file system image, so that your main CPU can bootstrap your coprocessor, right? Um, and the same thing with your DSP, uh, depending on how well supported in Yocto your DSP is by your uh, board support package, you might be able to build the BSP firmware or whatever directly in Yocto and you can partition that off in its own multi-config and generate an image and go ahead and include that image in your root file system so your CPU can bootstrap your DSP. And the same with your FPGA, right? Like you can package up your FPGA uh, bitstream somehow um, and have your main CPU root file system, have that all packaged up um, so that your main CPU can, you know, bootstrap your FPGA. Uh, and, you know, importantly, you can do this all one build command. So it's really easy for your end users to get a functioning image that boots all of these things with just one invocation, um, which is really nice. Uh, and really useful. Um, but we don't have to be talking necessarily even about just hardware partitioning in that regard. So, you know, let's say you're running a hypervisor like uh, like Zen here. Um, and, you know, uh, Zen has all of these uh, virtual machines that it uses to do housekeeping. And I don't pretend to remember what these did exactly. Um, uh, but you've got these like housekeeping VMs here that, that do things for Zen. And then you've got your guest VMs, uh, right? And so you've got these here and they're running a Linux kernel and doing stuff. And maybe you've got things that aren't even uh, Linux um, that you want to run uh, as a, a, a VM on Zen, right? And so you need to build all of this up into a single image so that you can flash it onto your device or whatever. And multi-config, again, can be really helpful there because you can package all of this up into a single invocation of BitBake, um, such that uh, you know all of these different virtual machines that are running are different multi-configs, and they can be configured completely independently of each other, but then get all sucked into one final image that you can flash on the device, um, and uh, you'll be ready to go. Um, and you know, just like with uh, uh, hypervisors, uh, you can do the exact same thing with containers, right? So, you know, multi-config can uh, help you out a lot here. Uh, if you if you need to ship container images of some kind, you can package up these container images uh, with the build build them up with multi-config and then package them into your root file system, um, and uh, you know just have a single image that you can flash on there and runs your entire container workload. Uh, and it is, it's really convenient that way. Um, does that all make sense as to like use cases for like that kind of uh, uh, multi-config use cases? Oh, are there any open source examples of real working systems using multi-config? Um, I haven't found any, I suspect um, a lot of the uses aren't publicly available. Um, I, I've been meaning to go in and add, because we have like uh, the Zen stuff for the Raspberry Pi. I've been meaning to go in there and see if that's using multi-config. Um, and if not, you know, maybe add some example or something like that, that people could look at. Um, a, another good one demo would be the container stuff here. Like that should be fairly easy to sort out. Yeah, yes, yeah, sorry, I forgot. The Xilinx BSP does do a lot of multi-config. Um, so you, you can check that one out too. Um, yeah, so that's kind of like a image, you know, partitioning way to think of uh, multi-config. Um, you can also do, like I said, configuration management. This is primarily how I use multi-config at my job. So we have all of these, um, products uh, that you know you can define these different products you got like you know cob.com that's one product and sato and arthur and these are all different products and they have different configurations um and so these these multi-config fragments um 
the, uh, they're applied after the local.com. So things that you specify in here are effectively like fixed unless you define them weekly, such that users can't really override it. Um, Cause you don't necessarily, like in some cases you don't necessarily want them to be able to do that um, like easily um, because, because you want them to get the configuration for this thing that they are building and not necessarily have to have them worry about like accidentally overriding it for some reason. Like if it's supposed to run on, QEM UX86, you don't want them to build this configuration for, you know, something else necessarily. Um, so uh, just as a shameless plug, I, I kind of wrote a tool that um, helps you do some of these kinds of things. You can go take a look at it. It's the one that I use a lot at my job um, to manage, to do configuration management with multi-config. Um, yeah, uh, and I see someone asked a question. Uh, if you can, you can set the machine in each multi-config, and yes, that's true. Is there a way to pull in different VSP layers? Uh, there kind of is, um, and <laughs> it's a little bit. Uh, it's an interesting way of doing it, but uh, one of the things uh, that you can do with multi-config is you can actually set a different BB mask for every multi-config. So if you're not familiar with BB mask, it, it's it's not used a whole lot, but but what it lets you do is tell BitBake to ignore paths, like recipes or things um, in a given path. Um, and so you can tell BitBake to ignore entire layers or entire or like entire directories or specific recipes or BB appends. Um, and we tend to use this a lot um, with some of the uh, less well-behaved BSPs um, to mask off some of the things that they're doing that are uh, things that we don't like or don't play well with others or things like that. Um, but one of the interesting things is that you can actually do this per multi-config, which means that you can make it so that different multi-configs have visibility to different sets of layers and or recipes. Um, and this allows you to build multi-configs with layers that might have otherwise conflicted. So for example, if you're building a whole bunch of different multi-configs for different SOCs with different BSPs, um, you could pull in the superset of all of the layers um, that you needed uh, and then have each BSP BB mask off the ones that don't apply to it. Um, I know that sounds kind of convoluted. Um, the tool, that WISC tool that I wrote will do that for you um, if you set up all the layer configuration. Uh, and this is exactly what we do at my job. Uh, we, uh, you know, use this to uh, uh, set up all of our layers and then mask off the things we don't care about. Um, can each config use a different tool chain? Yes. They can. You can totally do that. You can do bare metal tool chains. I think there's examples of using bare metal tool chains out there. Um, and so you can set up one of your multi configs to do a bare metal tool chain. You can, yeah, I will pre built. Yes, yeah, so you can set up one of them to do a pre built multi -con or tool chain for a microcontroller. And you can, you know, silo that into a multi config and it won't affect anything else that you're building. Um, and then, and then you can take the outputs of that and, you know, shove it into a Linux root file system and your Linux image can bootstrap that microcontroller or whatever you want to do. Or I've seen SOCs where the microcontroller bootstraps the Linux, uh, <laughs> bootstraps the Linux side. How does a run Q, um, how does a run QMU script handle multi-config? Are you asking like technically how it handles it or just how to make run QMU run a different multi-config. Oh, for QMU, you have to specify the environment variable, um, the multi-config environment variable. Here, I'll type it into the chat for you. You do it like that. So you, that, that's actually an environment variable. Right, that's the shell syntax for a set this environment variable, but only when I run this command. So you could also do something like this. 
Oops. But I don't usually recommend that because you can forget to unset it when you die. Um, yeah, okay. Um, so I actually have a, sorry, I actually should have moved on. Uh, I actually have an example of the BB mask that you can do. Um, can I? Uh, yeah, so I actually have an example of the BB mask that you can do that we can try out here. It's basically the same thing that we just did. We're just going to mask off this uh, dreamer.bb append. First, yeah. Yeah, if you didn't get the S state on the first build, you're, it's going to still be running. Uh, so we're going to mask off this dreamer.bb append um, in the actual cob multi-config. Remember to watch that S there if you didn't clone it down with the S directory. Um, and then we will bit bake this and we can see the oops we can see that that will be masked off so um yeah no that 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 uh packaging that's going to take a long time because that's really io bound so i would expect that to take a while um i'm going to cover the output the deploy directories and the temp directories in just a, in, on my next slide. Um, so yeah, um, you cannot run multiple QEMUs in the same invocation of run QEMU. You could start two shells, um, two two environments. You know, source the environment in two shells and then run QEMU. That way, I guess. Yeah, I guess if you could run, you could run one in the background and then start a second one, but it has to be one command per multi config. You can't like have multiple QMUs spawn in the same command with different multi configs. But you know, if you if you run one in the background and then run the second one, that would work. Um, okay, so I'm sorry, I, I realized I covered up what I was trying to do here. Okay, so yeah, we'll go ahead and. Uh, but, uh, multi config demos. Multi -config. I'm gonna edit it directly so you can kind of see some of the things that are in these multi configs. So we're gonna do bb mask plus equals. Oh, nope, that's not right. Bb append. Uh, that should do it. All right, and this should. Yeah, I don't know if I mentioned it. I, th I think I forgot, but like when you're when you're using multi config and you do, you know, you do a bit bake. You you prefix and you want to build a specific recipe from a specific multi config. You prefix it with this MC multi config prefix, and that. That's what tells but like to build this specific recipe out of this multi config. I realize I probably should have named my images something other than the same name as the multi config they come from because that might be a little confusing. Um, but there's there's no relation between this and this. I just happen to name them the same for my own sanity. Hopefully this will build quite quickly. Yeah, yeah. Mine stopped. Oh, yeah, stopping at 13%. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, th I think it's just hard for it to figure out 
the intermediate steps when it's doing some of the root FS generation. Ah, question inside Cobb, the Arthur QMU image is stored at user share Arthur, Arthur image QMU x86 64.exe4. How does BitBake know that it's the Arthur.exe4 that it has to put into Cobb, not the tar.gz or other files? Does it default to that? Do you need to instruct it to do so manually? Yes. So you need to tell it all of that stuff manually. So, um, when my build is done, I will show you the recipe that pulls in that, uh, that, that, that does all of that. I'll, sh I'll show that to you as soon as this is done. That recipe is a, a good case study for how to do some of this stuff. So that would be good to show. I've been pointing things out with my mouse cursor. Have you guys actually been able to see it? Let's just check and see if there's any Zoom stuff too. Oh, someone was asking what the KVM part of run QMU is. So, you know, normally QMU is an emulator. It's a virtual machine. So by default, it's going to emulate every single instruction that gets executed. Um, <laughs> uh, by default, it's going to emulate every single instruction that the host, that the guest, sorry, the guest is executing. The KVM part um, allows it to use the dev KVM kernel device node, which allows it to quote unquote offload the execution to the native CPU, which effectively means it executes natively. So instead of emulating all your x86 instructions on x86, it's actually directly executing the instructions on your processor. Um, and that, uh, that lets it run obviously much faster than emulating everything. Um, but you can only generally do that if uh, the guest matches the host. Well, like this is what's done for, at least as far as I'm aware, I, this is what's done for all those big cloud virtual machines, right? They're not, they're not emulating every instruction that gets executed there. They're offloading that through something similar to this, to the actual CPU, right? So this just lets QMU do that same thing. I logged in, but I'm getting this error, cat etsydreamer.com. Um, I'm guessing maybe you didn't build the right image. Did you build like core image minimal or core image base or something maybe? Or you didn't invoke QEMU with the BB multi-config environment variable would be my guess. And it booted up a different one maybe, I'm not sure. Oh, someone was asking previously about the 
Oh yes, is it possible to build an ESDK which supports a set of multi-configs? I don't think so, but that definitely would be a useful thing to add. I think you'd have to have a different ESDK for each multi-config. Um, but I don't know. I'm not very familiar with the SDK, honestly. So um, I don't know if that's possible. OK, um, close this. OK, uh, yeah, so I built this here. Um, and we'll go ahead and run our QEMU again. Yeah, make sure you have this multi-config equals cob prefix on your QMU or else you're not going to run the right one. Um, yeah, so we'll run this up. And now if we go, uh, oops. Yeah, so, we'll, uh, so you'll notice when I do this, it just says Cobb. And the, uh, the whole sweet dreams thing is missing. And the reason for that is that that sweet dreams uh, line is actually added by this dreamer.bb append in the layer. Um, so by masking it off, you'll notice that Cobb no longer has that. Um, but if we recurse into the Arthur image here, particularly fast, but oops. You'll notice it still says the sweet dreams because it did not see the BB mask um, because it was specific to that Cobb multi-config. So does that make sense to everyone how you can have that BB mask apply to different multi-configs? Um, Hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. I'll, I'll uh, exit here so that if we're all trying to share uh, CPU resources, you can have some. Okay. Um, right. So you wanted to see the uh, recipe that pulls in that thing. Let me try to get that. There we go. Uh, so that's going to be in meta multi config demos recipes. Miss Yeah, so this is the recipe that pulls in that Arthur image. It's, it's actually, it's a recipe that makes a package and that package includes the Arthur rootfs and kernel, right? And so, um, you know, it's pretty straightforward. It's got this, this is that script I was telling you about that just wraps up the invocation of QEMU. Um, but basically what it's doing here you know, it's only got this do install task. And what it's doing is it's pulling um, the kernel and root file system uh, explicitly from the temp Arthur deploy directory. Um, and then it's putting them into user share Arthur um, and then install installing the script. And that's really all it's doing uh, is just pulling those images that have been created already out of Arthur's deploy directory. Um, and then here's that MC depends line. Uh, you know, this is the, exactly the one from the example that I was showing you to, to parse out what they mean. Uh, so this is the line that adds that dependency. So basically when you're building Cobb, uh, you need to depend on do image complete from the Arthur image recipe. And so that's, you know, that's what makes sure that these things are in the deploy directory um, before this do install task runs. Right, and so you need that. Otherwise, those files might not actually be there. 
um, just, just like any other dependency, right? Um, yeah, so that's basically how that recipe works. I don't remember who was asking about that, but hopefully that answers how that works. Um, yeah, did anyone, does everyone get the, uh, did anyone want to spend more time on the BB mask thing here? Um, we're getting a lot of good questions. Um, so I, I'd like to have time to answer questions and help people get the initial demo working. Uh, Cause I feel like that's a little more mm, interesting okay. than the BB mask thing. Someone's mm -hmm. mic is, someone's mic is accidentally on. Can they, everyone make sure you're muted. Unless you're trying to ask a question, I guess. Okay. Um, right. So uh, sharing of temp directories between multi-configs. Um, generally, it's considered the best practice to put each multi-config in its own uh, tempter. And, and you do this by assigning tempter to the multi-config, which I did in my examples. Uh, Conf multi-config, right? So you can see here, I assigned each uh, multi-config its own uh, temp directory, um, its own distinct temp directory. Um, so uh, the, yeah, so it's generally considered best practice to assign each multi-config its own temp directory. Um, it is technically possible to have uh, different multi-configs sharing the same temp directory because BitBake is designed to handle that. Um, but there's one huge caveat with that, and that is that misconfigured recipes will cause a whole bunch of problems. So uh, I don't know if you guys covered this, but uh, recipes can basically choose from, uh, choose, they have to describe what architecture they are. And generally there's three options that you can choose from. You can make something um, like all arch, which is like a script that it doesn't matter what kind of host it runs on because it's interpreted. Um, you can make it um, like your CPU architecture, like ARCH64 or QMUX86, you know, something generic where it's like, this can run on a whole family of processors. Um, or you can make it machine Arch, which means this thing can only run on this machine. Um, so um, the problem is if you have any recipes that don't have their package arch set correctly, sharing tempters causes a whole bunch of problems um, because BitBake will get really confused about whether it can share a recipe between multiple, you know, multi-configs in the temp directory. Um, if the architectures aren't set correctly and it can't figure out otherwise. Um, so uh, there are recipes out there that just outright don't have this set correctly. Like uh, the, the default is to be uh, CPU arch specifics like uh, ARCH64 or ARMv7 or QEMUX86. Um, and then you generally explicitly will set it to machine arch or all arch if necessary. Um, there's a lot of recipes out there that are just outright wrong and don't have it set to machine arch when they should. Um, but it's it's a little more insidious than that even because you could do something like um, in a BB append, change the configuration of a recipe in a way that non-obviously makes it machine specific. Um, and if you don't also change the package arch, uh, then that can cause you problems. So I would just recommend putting all your multi-configs in their own temp directory, unless you're absolutely sure that you can separate them out um, uh, safely, or sorry, unless you're absolutely sure you can combine them safely. Um, I would recommend putting each one in its own tempter. Um, just of note, uh, you know, the default is they're all gonna share a tempter because they're just going to inherit tempter from your local conf file. So you need to go in and explicitly uh, set it in your multi-config uh, to specify what its tempter should be. Um, okay, yeah, so there's a question, how can you get the tempter of one multi-config and another multi-config? Um, the answer to that is you 
need to set it to a known value in your in the multi config that you want. So, uh, you know, I, I did this in my example here. So like I specifically set tempter in Arthur to topter temp Arthur. And then uh, in my recipe, uh, you know, I explicitly reference that tempter path. Um, because one of the things you can't currently do with Bitbake is query one multi-configs variables from another multi-config. It would be really useful in a lot of instances, especially like this, because then you could say, oh, what's Arthur's, what's the value of Arthur's tempter? But there just isn't a way to do it right now. Um, and so you just have to basically like effectively hard code it, right? Like I know that I set Arthur's tempter to top temp Arthur. So I, that's just what I use here. Um, so hopefully that answers your question. Uh, where do we configure tempter in multi-config for both configs? Like which files? Uh, you set it in the multi-config itself, right? So I've got, uh, um, you know, I've got this multi-config, you know, these are where my multi-configs are defined. So I'm actually just going to set it in this multi-config, you know, in each one. So here in this Cobb multi-config, you know, I set tempter to temp Cobb, uh, and then likewise um, in the Arthur multi-config, I set tempter to temp Arthur. Um, and then you just, you just know to reference that when you're dealing with the multi-configs. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. Okay. Um, can I, I can the base be base config be one of the multi configs? Are you talking about the like the default multi config? Um, like the yeah yes it can uh, right so um, that's that empty multi config I was telling you about right like uh, here right so this. This makes the empty multi-config the, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the two multi-config from multi-config. I'm sorry, I just get this confused. It makes it the one that you have to filter on for it to be, uh, for it to be active. So this means like if you're in the base default config, then this is active. You can also do it the other way around if you want, where you can put it in place of this Arthur here, which means you would make a, a multi-config um, you know, like if this were MC Cobb empty, that would make the Cobb multi-config depend on the base default configuration. Um, you could do that too. You do have to be, you would have to be a little bit careful with that because that base multi-config is really, you know, it's whatever's in the users local.com. So whether that's valid or the way you expect it to be can sometimes be tricky. Um, unless you have some mechanism that kind of sets up the user's configuration when they're building. Um, does that all make sense? But yeah, you can just use that empty string um, in place of a multi-config definition. Um, and that, that works for the MC depends. Um, you, do, you would have to be careful about the tempter in that case though, because obviously, Temp, if you're change, setting the tempter specifically for a multi-config, it's going to be really hard to know what the base configuration's tempter is anymore, right? Because it's, you know, the variable gets overridden in the multi-config. Um, so, yeah. Uh, okay, so yeah, a couple, uh, a couple final tips about multi-configs, and then I will try to answer all of your multi-config related questions. Um, uh, so uh, you can dump the environment of the Bitbake environment with multi-config, just like you would without multi-config. Um, there's just a couple things you have to remember. So like if you would do bitbake-e recipe to dump the environment for a given recipe, you can dump that recipe in a specific multi-config using you know, you have to add this MC colon multi-config name prefix, just like you would if you were building the recipe. 
Um, the base configuration, uh, which you can dump with bitbake e, uh, you can do that the same way. Uh, and the way you do that is bitbake e mc multi config name with no suffix. So that's the important part to remember there. Um, uh, yeah, so that lets you do that. Um, and then, yeah, so if, if you're going to be sharing things between different multi configs, the uh, by and large, the best way to do that is to have the one multi-config put stuff into its deploy directory and then have the other multi-config pull things out of that deploy directory um, that's by and that's by far the easiest way i've found to share things between multi-configs um, it works pretty well uh, you can do that with images or kernel basically anything you can put in deployer you can do that um, but in order for that to work you know you have to know where the deployer of every multi-config that you're using is um, and so you can do that by setting the tempter and then it'll be, you know, tempter deploy by default, or you can explicitly set deployer for your multi-configs if you want to put them somewhere else. Um, the tool that we use whisk, uh, does that for you and then gives you a variable with, for every multi-config that describes where it's deployer is. So you don't have to just know that it's a specific spot. There's a variable that references it, but it, it does that for you. Um, Bitbake doesn't give you any way of doing that. Um, and I think that's kind of what you're getting at. Uh, I'm sorry, Ola. Uh, is there a multi-config override namespace like foo pn bar? I'm not sure exactly what you're asking there. Um, you know, e each, each multi-config is sort of independently parsed. So all the normal rules from overrides and things like that still apply just as they would in each individual one. I'm not sure if you're asking like, is there an override specific to the multi-config? Um, the answer is no. Um, and uh, yeah, the answer is no. Um, yeah, you could manually add BB current MC to overrides if you wanted to do that. Um, Oh, yes, yeah. So he, he's asking if I do like tempter underscore MC Arthur in local.conf. No, uh, you can't do that. That does not work. There is no override for multi configs. You could add one, maybe. Um, one of the problems you might find with that, just thinking off the top of my head, is you know, your overrides are always deferred. Um, so they're always going to happen really late um, in the parsing process. And that might, cause some problems with the way things are parsed because that you know that that's like doing a depend or something you know it, it happens late in the process um so if you had things maybe doing immediate evaluation somewhere that might cause you some trouble um i'm not sure but yeah you you could manually add it to the overrides and try that um, i'm not sure Yeah, so setting that tempter Arthur and tempter Cobb in the global configuration. Yeah, that's that's exactly what we do um, where I work. We our scripts, you know, that that Whisk tool does exactly that. It creates tempter, the name of your product, um, and then in each individual multi-config, it does that tempter equals tempter Arthur tempter you know Cobb. So that way you have a variable that references all of them. Um, so it's not hard coded necessarily, and you can reference it symbolically, but it's still set correctly in each multi-config. Um, can you put the BB current MC in the two portion of a MC depends? Uh, yeah, you totally can. Um, if you wanted to, you can, you can use that BB current MC anywhere you would reference a multi-config. Um, and you can use it to figure out what the current multi-config is too. We've definitely done things where we have um, anonymous Python uh, that checks the value of BB current MC to know whether it's in a specific multi-config. I'm not gonna say this is necessarily the best way to do it, but you can. Um, you could write anonymous Python to check the current multi-config or, or even like check it in a task. Like if you wanted to know if I'm in a specific multi-config. Um, you can definitely use that variable or or abuse it as the case may be. Um, it's, it's just another bit big variable. Um, yeah, that's I mean that's all I got. Um, 
we've got another half hour. I can answer questions. Um, um, yeah. Uh, BB current MC is uh, set to default in the ba the the word default. Um, you know, I, I can demonstrate this actually. Um, so if I just do bit bake dash e right, so that's the base environment, um, and I do BB current. Ah. If I can type MC equals right. So this is oops. You want to actually grab for that. Um, so this is you know it's set to the value default, um, and that's that's what it's going to be for that base configuration, which is the non-multi-config case. Right. That that base configuration is always the same regardless of whether you have anything in BB multi-config or not, um, and so it's always just set to that default. I'm looking to speed up building for multiple mach similar machines. Splitting temp there presumably means that there might be a lot of resurrecting from estate going on in this situation. But yes, that is true. How common are problems and recipes when sharing a temp there? Um, I don't know from experience. Um, I Like I said, there's lots of subtle ways that you can change things that will unknowingly make it machine arch and you won't realize it. Um, so I'd be really careful about that. Um, is it some, only something that affects lower quality recipes outside of OE core? Um, I don't know. I, th I mean, we try really hard to make sure that OE core is high quality. I mean, I mean every, everyone tries to make sure the recipes are high quality, right? Um, but I don't know. And again, like even just something as simple as a BB append to change the configuration of something might inadvertently make it machine specific and cause you problems. So you have to be really careful. Um, it's just, it's, it's hard. Um, there probably needs to be some sort of tooling or something to help figure out when that's going on. So at least you can know and fix it. Um, but I, I don't think there's anything. I don't think we have anything like that just yet. Um, there's been some ideas thrown around. Yeah, it's the, it's the, um, it's the package arch variable. I, I don't know if you guys have learned about the package arch variable yet. Um, let's see if I can, I don't think I have any great examples of it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you do like a package. Right, so like the most common error is you're you're not setting package arch to machine arch when you should. Um, um, that's that's by and large the, the most common error is that you you accidentally make something machine specific and don't realize it. All right, is there any other questions or things you'd like to see? I mean. Oh, how would you manage things like the license information in SBOM for embedded images? Um, I don't. I don't have a concrete example of that. However, I will say, like, just building everything inside of Yocto or you know Bitbake and stuff that gives you a huge leg up in that regard, right? Because um, we're uh, so, you know, because you're building all of this stuff, presumably from source, you, you have all that licensing information, um, you know, where we're currently talking about ways to actually generate, you know, 
s bombs of some kind uh, for all the stuff that we build. Um, and so just by building with Yocto, you've already kind of got a leg up there and that we're already collecting a lot of that information. We just need to put it in something that you know is consumable and then coalesce it all together. So you're already starting with a leg up there because you can have all the license information and then you know export that to your deployer or something and pull it into the image that you're including uh, so that you you have all that information as opposed to like, you know, necessarily pulling down a random image from Docker Hub, right? Where who knows what's in there, right? Um, yeah, does that make sense? Um, so I guess the answer is there isn't currently a uh, accepted concrete situation uh, way for ant managing the S bomb and OE core, but it's definitely something we're talking about. Yeah, uh, yeah. There's been there's been some discussion on the the S bomb, and it's definitely something we're looking at pretty extensively now. Um, if you are interested in S bombs and embedded images and things like that, um, we're definitely having that conversation now, and I would highly encourage you to get uh, get involved in that. Uh, from the Xilinx BSP, let's see, this is this a question? In this, oh, in this time, has basic images included. Okay, so um, and Anand is asking if the temp, uh, so that that temp directory, that's for the base configuration. Um, we never built anything in the base configuration, if you noticed, right? Everything we built was in a multi-config. There's not actually going to be much in that temp directory for the base image. Now you totally could, you could go in there and you could just bit bake. You know, core image base or something, and build something in that base configuration. Um, you know, we didn't do that. Um, and you could make the base configuration pull in one or both of those images if you wanted. Um, but yeah, but uh, we didn't do that in this example. It, it was the Cobb multi config pulled in the Arthur multi config. <laughs> Slides mention one possible use case of use to build DSP and FPGA firmware through Yocto. I'm interested in that. If anyone knows anything about that, I, I know Xilinx. I think the Xilinx BSP is probably the only thing I know about that does that kind of thing. Um, I think, uh, actually, I think maybe TI's BSP can also be built in Yocto or a DSP firmware can also be built in Yocto. I'm not sure. Um, Yeah, I mean, a lot of that's going to depend on your board support package, right? Some, some of them make it easier than others to build inside of Yocto. Um, so it just depends. Oh, it looks like TI has multi-config. Oh, yeah, that's great. That's great. I haven't used much of TI's modern stuff, so I haven't really had a chance to go in and poke around. Um, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and I think if you look in some of those configs, they're, they're explicitly setting that deployer. Uh, and if, I'm pretty sure the reason for that is if you look somewhere, they're they're going to go reference that to pull things into multi MC depends, right? I'm fairly certain that's going to be the case. That way, they know where the where the deployer is, or they might even just be directly deployed. Uh, no, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's why they're doing that. But we'd have to go poke around in the BSP to find out. Still got like 20 minutes. Is there anything you want to see or? Anything you want me to 
talk about more. I could talk all day probably about multi-config. It's made my life so much better. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so I mean, uh, you know, the, the way we use multi-config is we have, uh, like I said, a multi-config for every product that we build. Or, well, yeah, we have a multi-config for every product that we build. Um, and then you can go choose, uh, actually, you know, this is all, we, we published the tool to do this. Um, so I can actually go show you some examples. Uh, yeah, so, um, you know, you can actually go in um, and choose, you, you initialize your build environment, you choose what product you want to build, and you can choose multiple products at the same time. Um, and because each one is its own multi-config, it'll just go, you know, when you, when you type the command to build, it'll go build all of them, and they're all isolated. And it uses that BB mask thing to mask off the layers that a given product doesn't care about, so they don't conflict with each other. Um, uh, yeah, the, the only restriction, um, is that if you do this, all of the products that you choose to build at the same time have to be using the same version of Yocto. Uh, so you can't mix like, you know, Dunfell and, you know, hard not products together. Cause you know, they, you have to pick one version of, of Yocto to be using that you can't, uh, you can't split it apart. Um. But yeah, and then we just there's it creates this alias. So you just say bit bake all targets and it goes and builds every product uh, that you've told it to build. Um, and you can go tell it to build specific ones if you want. Um, and then it sets up all these variables like I was talking about. So it sets your tempter um, for you uh, for each product and it gives you a variable so you can access them. And it does the same thing with deployer. Um, yeah, it sets all these these variables for you to use um, and stuff like that. Um, and so th this is nice because like when we're, you know, if we want to do, if we want to do a release of five related products, right? Like we might be combining five related products into some end user deliverable, right? So we can actually go build all five of those at once and then have a thing that combines all of the output of those into a single deliverable that we can send to our customer, right? Um, so multi-config makes that super easy. Uh, well, you know, rel relatively easy to do. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention this. The BB mask support wasn't added until Yocto 3.2. So it actually doesn't work in Dunfell. Um, that's that BB mask thing I was talking about. Um, it's if you have your own mirror of Dunfell, you can backport the patch to do it fairly easily if you want to do it on older versions. Um, but yeah. Um, you know, and then the other nice thing that we have here set up um, is uh, we actually have it set up so that we can build the same product against different versions of Yocto. So, each product will have a default version like Dunfell or Gatesgarth or whatever. And that's, you know, when we release to the customer, that's, that's what we build against. And then, but if you want to, you can go in and change this to be some code name for a newer version, like hard not, or, you know, whatever, I forget the name of the latest one. Um, and you can actually just try at least to build that product against that version of Yocto instead. Um, which makes it a lot easier for us to, you know, try out new versions before we switch to them or just to make sure that we're still working with everything and things like that. Okay, I just noticed that Meta Xilinx uses a multi-config dependency like do image, MC depends, multi-config. It's using, yeah, so it's got the blank default from the source. 
the dependency goes from the default MC to an MC called PMUMC. Does this mean the build will break if I have a multi-config other than default? No, it will not. So that, uh, that from multi-config is, is a filter. It's not a, uh, um, yeah, this from, this is a filter. It's not a uh, hard requirement, I guess, right? It's not going to break um, if you don't have a multi-config named Cobb, for example. It's just this this configuration, this dependency only applies when it's parsing a multi-config named Cobb. Does that make sense? I think like, especially in that Xilinx case, um, you know, it, if we were gonna pull in something like that, it would almost, I would almost prefer they use this BB current MC instead of that default, because I might wanna pull that PMU multi-config into a different multi-config since everything I build is a multi-config. Um, and so what they have there today wouldn't work for me um, because I wouldn't, I wouldn't be pulling that into a, uh, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, you have to have both. Uh, it, it's a little annoying and probably should be fixed. So, you know, if you want to pull it into the default or whatever the current one is, you have to have both of these lines um, in your MC depends uh, because BBMC is default, but the empty one is current. It, it's it's a weird thing. We probably should fix that. <laughs> that probably wouldn't be that hard to fix. How does populate sysroot and recipe sysroot between multi-configs work? Right, so assuming you're using separate temp directories, uh, there's no sharing of that between multi-configs. Um, each one's gonna, if, you, if you're doing each one in its own temp directory, um, you know, they're just gonna run. Like I said, the way that you generally transfer things between multi-configs is through the deployer. Like you, you have some recipe deploy something and then you, pull it out of that multi-configs deployed here from a different multi-config. Um, does that make sense? Because it's basically like you're running, when you have multi-configs, it's basically like you're running like independent builds, really. You're just using the same invocation of bitbake to do it. Um, because they're pretty, I mean, they're pretty independent as far as that goes, but they share multi, they, they share, sorry, they share a state and download cache, which is super convenient. Um, and, you know, Bitbank's only going to run so many tasks at once. So you're not going to necessarily bog down your system. Can I please elaborate on this command once more? Right. Okay. So, um, yeah, can I elaborate on this Bitbank MC Cobb Cob image? So, um, you know, uh, Cobb image is a recipe that I that I wrote that's in that um, in that meta multi config demos layer. Um, so if you go in here, recipes, oops, it's images, recipes, images. You know, this is a this is an, a really simple image recipe that I wrote, um, and it just includes package image core boot, the streamer recipe, the Arthur embed recipe, and QEMU. Right, so really simple, really simple little image recipe. Um, so basically what I'm saying is I want to build that image, just like you build core image minimal or core image base or whatever your image recipe is. Um, the difference is I'm prefixing it with this MC Cobb prefix. And what that means is uh, um, you know, the, the MC is just a required fixed string that you have to have that says this is a multi-config. And then that Cobb says that I want to build this image inside of this multi-config, um, which has to be one of the ones that you added in your BB multi-config variable. Does, does that make sense? Um, it's basically just a way of saying like, uh, I should have put a slide in on this, I suppose, uh, that did it 
kind of like this one where it color coded everything. But basically you're saying like build the cob image recipe in the multi-config cob. Okay. Are you able fil to filter logs for different CI CD pipelines? One pipeline. Uh, you wouldn't, I guess I'm not quite sure. So like when you're building, oh, there's something else I should show you too um, that might make this make a little more sense. So um, the other thing you can do, if you wanna build, um, I don't do this much, so I don't, I always forget that it's a thing. Um, you can do like this, right? So I'm actually gonna build on the same, you know, on the same Bitbake invocation, I'm actually gonna build the Cobb image from the Cobb multi-config and the Arthur image from the Arthur multi-config, right? It's just, a, it's just a, that MC prefix is just a prefix that you add to any image recipe or any recipe really um, that says, build it in this multi-config instead. This, this should go, this should actually do nothing because I, I've already built all these things. Um, right now, the, the Cobb image that I have, MC depends on the Arthur image. So yeah, yeah, so it didn't do anything. Um, but you know, like, and you can build any recipe, right? So if I wanna do, um, you know, I could build, you know, Zlib, right? In the Cobb multi-config. So probably already there, right? Um, yeah, so that that MC multi-config prefix, you can do that with any, you know, any recipe, right? It's not, you're not just restricted. And, you know, if I wanted to, I could do core image minimal or base, right? That would build that in there. I'm not actually going to do it because it'll take a long time. Or it might take a long time. Um, you know, and that's, you know, just like this builds it for the default configuration. This builds it in your multi-config, right? Um, how does test image work with multi-config? I don't know. <laughs> um, I'm not actually sure. I, I, I'm pretty sure it could, it can work if it doesn't already. I don't think it's terribly hard. It's usually not terribly hard to make things multi-config aware if they're not already. Um, it's usually just a matter of adding in a little extra plumbing, uh, like the run QMU example, right? Like I added support for it to detect that environment variable to know which multi-config to use. And it's not that hard. You just you just basically have to, to plumb it in if it's not there already. Um, I don't know, I don't run test image all that often and I definitely don't run it with multi-config. Um, so I'm not sure if it does or does not work, but if it doesn't, I'm, I'm fairly certain it's probably easy to add. Um, let's see. So yeah, I mean, if you have any more questions, keep them coming in. Um, I mean, hopefully you found all of this enlightening. And uh, can we add a recipe directly in Bitbake MC Cobb CMake? I'm not exactly sure what you're asking there. Um, I mean, you can definitely you can build CMake, right? Um, I mean, that's a thing. I mean, all, all your recipes work just like they normally would inside a multi-config, right? Because there's nothing like, 
inherently special about a recipe in a multi-config or not, other than like you can add in the MC depends, right? But the, you know, when you go to build a recipe inside of a multi-config like Cobb or something, it's going to do all the same things it would normally do. It just does them all with the environment of that multi-config. So if your recipe depends on CMake, it's going to go build CMake native in your you know, MC Cobb C make native, right? Does that make sense? I, I guess I'm not quite sure what you're asking. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, you, you can still ask questions. Um, I'll be around here. Um, I'll hang out in the training room uh, for a little while longer. Uh, to answer some questions. Uh, otherwise, you can uh, uh, you can directly message me if you want. Um, you can also um, I'm on IRC. My handle is uh, JPW, as I showed. Um, you can talk to me there. Uh, yeah, I hope you find multi-config useful. It certainly has made my life a lot easier. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that that run queue deadlock thing is a known um, issue with this version of Yocto. I, uh, I'm sure they'll backport the fix once it's sorted out. Bug you mentioned about is this fix on done, Phil? I don't. I think I mentioned a bug about RenQMU specifically. I don't know what bug you were talking about, I guess. Sorry. I didn't think I had mentioned a bug specifically about RenQMU. Um. Yeah, I know if you want to try all this on your own, uh, the you know the repository is just on GitHub. Um, you should just be able to clone it down from a base Pocky and try it out too. If you want to try it out on your home machine, um, I'll I'll leave that up uh, and I'll update my slides here too. Um, yeah, uh, some of the paths will be a little different, obviously, because you won't be on the training machine, but it's the same idea. <laughs> yeah yeah sorry yeah when when the s state doesn't work it's just it's it's unmanageable um but yeah okay um i think i'm going to stop the recording oh it's slow on your build server i'm sorry it's it shouldn't be it shouldn't be that much slower than a regular build okay i'm going to stop the recording now um,